All right. Hello, everyone. I'm your host, Jeff Gardner, and thank you for joining me today for another episode of The Lost Bots, a series dedicated to all the unsung heroes out there and cyber first responders. So today I'm speaking with Mr. Dan Martin, lead project manager of our platform practice for a segment we like to call Tea Time, where we spill the tea on a given subject, and I hope Tea Time never goes out of style because we'll be screwed. Um, you know, I know two in a row, trust me, there's variety in segments to come in, but I've been asked about this one particular topic probably like 30 times in the last week or so. But before we get to that, Dan, who are you and what do you do? That's a good question. Um, it changes on any given day. But yeah, as you mentioned, I'm a product manager here at Rapid7. I work in our platform section, but I specifically focus on the endpoint as it relates to detection response products. Nice. So that's who you are. That's why you're here. Um, great to have you on board. So the topic. Today, we're going to be spilling the tea on XDR. So some say it's EDR with threat intelligence later on top. Gartner defines it as, I'm going to put air quotes, SaaS-based, vendor-specific, threat detection and IR tool that natively integrates multiple security products into a cohesive operation system that unifies all licensed components. Say that more than once. I dare you. Uh, but wherever you look, people seem to agree that the advantages are reduced noise, improved detection capabilities, productivity, lower cost of ownership, blah, 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 blah. Mm -hmm. Nothing everyone out there probably hasn't heard a hundred times before from probably every product in their security stack. So the question then becomes, in this multiverse of madness-like situation where you have a bunch of products rocking similar monikers, different powers, attitudes, etc., Dan, what is XDR really? Yeah, I mean, I have to be honest here, I'm going to come clean. Um, I made fun of this acronym for a long time. Um, and I think a lot of other people enjoyed making fun of it. Um, I like to still make fun of it, but I think the reality is we've started to hear customers ask us about it. And, um, you know, I, I'm actually less concerned about what it is, because I think we're still working to define that, both the customers, both vendors, everybody. Um, it's the DNR part of XDR that matters. Like we're just trying to get detection and response right. Um, and if SIM was completely filling that need, if EDR was completely filling that need, then we wouldn't be having this conversation. Um, and it's not, right? So I think the reality is that we step back and we see a few different solutions, both kind of half partially solving the need. And the demand from the customer is, is we need something better. Um, and, and right now, the way we're defining that and what we're calling it, is, is XDR, but I think we're really, really early to say what is it exactly, but we can start to see it forming based on what customers ask us. So evolution in progress. Um, so to the best of my knowledge, and this is I'm gonna something pass back to you afterwards, there's three flavors of XDR, kind of like Neapolitan ice cream. You've got open, you've got hybrid, and you've got native. So I'm gonna do my best to limp through this definition and then hopefully you can help me out afterwards so I'm open curious, so, yeah. <laughs> open xdr is basically like you buy an xdr product that fulfills one of the five to ten you know niches that xdr claims to you know take whether it be sim whether it be you know threat intel and then you can plug and play various other solutions into that vendor solution and that's open xdr hybrid would be where you pick the vendor that has the, the strength of your choice, whether it again be SIM or EDR, and they, they span multiple areas with an XDR, but still leaving you room to go and pick and choose from a few different uh, areas. And then there's native, which is basically like, we do everything uh, and it's all in one product. Uh, so I'm gonna pass that back to you first. Does that jive or am I completely off base? I mean, that's the closest I've heard to defining all three. I think what I've heard, what I've read or heard from a lot of industry analyst side is they're picking open or hybrid and kind of running with one of the two of those. I don't fully get the distinction because to your point, it sounds a lot like what we do today or what customers have to do today. Um, whether or not you're picking like best in breed in all the different, um, all the different areas or whether or not you're picking like the one you care the most about and making the rest work with it. It's kind of the position we're in right now. Um, I think the only difference between um, what we're talking about in the context of XCR and what we do today is as we start to define the functionality and critical capabilities or whatever we want to call them that XCR has to have, if you don't check all those boxes or you don't have that functionality, 
um, you know, as we define what that means, then maybe there's things that you didn't previously think about that you want to make sure it gets integrated in so you can see, you know, the full picture process tree, whatever it may be. Um, and then, yeah, the native one is kind of, uh, I, I shouldn't say straightforward, because again, back to my previous comment, I don't think we fully define what that means. Um, but yeah, it's like, hey, here's our thing. You can have all of it, a one-stop shop. Um, and there's obviously pros and cons to all those things. So speaking of pros and cons, um, you know, we've talked about the various approaches. Are there any benefits, drawbacks to each one of those styles that you'd like people to be aware of? Because I, I have some thoughts on either end of the spectrum and some thoughts about the middle, but I'll pass it over to you first to see if you kind of like jive with what I'm thinking up in here. Yeah, yeah. Well, as you being a for, former buyer of these things, I'm sure your pros and cons are maybe more rooted in, in reality. But having talked to, to customers, um, you know, it depends on, I think, more the maturity of your security program and what you're focused on and what you are view as the, the real threats to your, to your business today. Um, you know, native sounds great, right? Uh, in the sense that, um, you know, go to the one person for everything. Um, but none of us, and I, us, Rapid7, everybody in this industry does everything at the top-notch level, right? We have our strengths like anything else. Uh, and I think that, that buyers of native, like you get the simplicity, allegedly, if we deliver properly. Um, but also, you know, by nature, you want to make sure that our strengths are the things that you care about the most. Um, and that's going to differ from business to business, regardless of size of business, anything like that. Um, the open and hybrid, like the pros and cons there, I would just say, again, that's largely kind of the situation we're in today. So if you have best in breed in some certain class, obviously you don't want to move to an XDR solution that is less than or that you depend on for any of the, that capability set. Um, so I give you like the most product management answer of all time, because I basically just said it depends, but I used 250 words. Um, but I think that's the reality, right? It, it does go on a case by case basis. I right? understand um, your business and what you need and, and kind of go according to that. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to spell check your, I'm going to word count your document, give you the C plus that your professor would give you back in college for meeting the, the minimum requirement. Nah, that was good, man. I appreciate that. Oh, so just in general for this XDR stuff, what would be the, the one piece of advice? And we may have already talked about it, but just to reiterate. What would be your one piece of advice for anyone looking at the, to quote Men in Black, the new hotness, <laughs> old busted hotness, new hotness? Like, what's the new hotness? <laughs> I, my one piece of advice would be, and again, not, not to just go over what we just said, but if you look at anyone selling you anything, right, XDR or anything, um, look at what they were doing right before that or what, they're, what you believe they're really good at. What is the bread and butter? Um, and understand that that will continue to be the case. Over time, we will all get better at all the things we're not good at, yada, yada. Um, but I think like you need to, what I've seen um, is a lot of, how do I put this nicely? Copy paste of what I currently or was formerly selling, but now I have this brand new thing that's XDR and I've added a few bullet points um, and things like that. Um, but, you know, and I don't think anyone's, doing this to try to be elusive but i just think you have to know like what is the core capability what is the core expertise of what you were doing and understanding that's still going to be the case um and as just from a buyer perspective i think if you lead with that and accept the fact that all this other capability to round out my solution whether that's native open hybrid whatever um if i'm okay with that still being maybe not uh top notch top of market then maybe that's okay Nice. And uh, I'll throw in my two cents. So, um, you know, I don't have one. I kind of have two. One is the major, kind of like you said, keep your use case as with all things, as with everything that we do, you have to have a use case, a use case as hopefully yeah. don't just buy into XDR thinking it as another point solution to address a singular set of issues in your program. XDR is meant, you know, to be more cohesive, more broad, and you really have to have those use cases. Otherwise, if you look at all the capabilities that XDR has and you're buying it for this thing, you're not, you're going to have a bad time yeah. <laughs> because yeah. you're not going to utilize the full feature set that it brings. So just make sure that it fits in your program. Like you said, it makes sense for you 
not based on what analysts or anyone else, anyone else out there is saying. It's got to make sense for you. But then the second point is kind of a little more executive policy ish. You know, just go back if you're looking at the solution and think about how you're going to integrate it in your disaster recovery business continuity plans. Because again, if you're putting a bunch of eggs in one basket and it's, for example, it's cloud native, just make sure you have those backups and things in place. So if you're if for some reason an asset isn't able to communicate back to the cloud or an attacker has somehow managed to find and detect whatever mechanism is on your assets to communicate back home, that you have backup strategies in place, which again is why I think that hybridized solution kind of makes more sense because you'll always have a backup of a backup of backup. So even if they go, okay, I found this agent, kill it there's still other ways and you can see that agent being killed and be like, ah, all right. So someone's on this box. Now I need to just kill all comms to that box. Um, it's just something to keep in mind. Cause like, you know, people rush in and then something happens like the provider goes down and well, if all your eggs in one basket, then you're kind of left holding that basket and it's empty and it's not going to be, not going to be fun. <laughs> I think that's a really good point. It's actually not what I've heard made a ton because, you know, if you think of like where we're at with infrastructure as a service, where we're at with like cloud providers, um, people are kind of reassessing those decisions now for the same reasons, right? Like single source, uh, single vendor, like whatever you want to call it, um, you know, from a risk disaster recovery perspective, uh, you might not want to wake up in five years and have those decisions be what you made. So, but no, it's a good point. And I haven't really heard people talk about that as much, um, but I think it's a great call out. It's because I'm, it's because I'm, I know you can't see it, but it's because I'm old <laughs> and I've seen things happen too often where it's like, you get so over relied on tools that when you have to step back and all your tools are taken away from you and you have to just use a command, use a command line. That's, that's what you got. You're left with a little blinking cursor. What do you do? And if it's been years since you've actually done IR manually, you've always been able to click a button and go collect my event sources. If you don't have those processes and all that documented, I don't expect everyone to remember it because there's too much stuff for any of us to remember at any given time, but at least have it in a book somewhere you can go, okay, here's the commands I need to run. Here's how I analyze that. Here's what I'm looking for. Just have that put on paper somewhere in a safe dust it off every year, make sure it's still applicable. I would just hate to see people get in a situation where, where you know, it's, it's fringe. It'll probably never happen, but where everything fails them and they're left with just a blinking, <laughs> blinking little prompt. And it's like, all right, well, um, I guess we're home we're, now. Yeah, we're, we're, <laughs> we can go home because we're not yeah. going to be in business very much longer. Cool. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, no, dust off that resume. Yeah, it's a good, it's a great point. Yeah. Um, so, uh, to wrap things up, you know, I like to end these with a segment called the end point, which is a joke that will never get old, hopefully, um, doing things a little differently though this time. So Dan, tell everyone one thing you've seen or a situation you've been in that made you face palm so hard. You almost knocked your chair over. Oh man. Um, I know it's tough. I'm going to play Jeopardy. Uh, when we get budget, I'm going to put Jeopardy theme song Jeopardy's right now, and it's going to be amazing. Yeah. So, I mean, the more and more I work with actual IR teams, right, they have all of the facepalm stories. Like, th things have already gone wrong. Um, things are already bad. You got the blinking cursor, like you just said. Um, this is actually kind of like a hybrid story that I've heard a couple times, but I was with a, a former colleague, like, kind of just sidecarring one of these um, parachute in, everything's gone sideways. And he'd been doing this for years. And he said, kind of prepped me. He's like, listen, no one can ever answer these two questions when I walk in the room. And I promise they won't either. What do you have? And what is it running? I, that's what I want to know. What do you have? And what is it running? And it sounds so basic and pedantic and all, like, but it's true. And it's actually like, not to just joke on it, it's actually a really hard thing to do. But if you can't do that, then even before things go wrong, what, what have you been doing? Right? Like it's that, like, it's such a basic thing and it is really, really hard to do well and maintain and have be dynamic. Um, but it's step zero really to all of this. Uh, and then sure enough, like we, you know, to your point, the face bomb, we went in there and like, no idea, no asset catalog, no way to do any of that. Not even like the, like, uh, I do have this spreadsheet, like didn't even have that. And it's 
so you're just walking into the abyss, into the darkness, uh, and it's really, really hard to climb up the mountain after that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, any anybody's heard anything I've done, you know, outside of this series or any webinar or everything, they'll they'll know a theme, which is back to basics. Yeah, always go back to basics, and it's hard, like you said, because new security people are thrust into an environment, everything's on fire normally, mm -hmm. so. How do we, when do we, how do we get the time to look back and actually, you know, it's the first like two controls of well, the old CIS top 20. I don't know if they're still in, in the, the new 18 or 15 or 10 or whatever it's going to be next year, but it's like number one and number two, asset inventory, software inventory. What do you got? What are the things running? That's where there's a reason why it's foundational. Number one and number two, because yeah. if you can't identify oh yeah, I've got these assets and they are all running all my tools. You may run into that situation like we talked about where, okay, there's an incident involving this asset. Ah, crap. It doesn't have anything on it. Well, what do we do? <laughs> yeah, so, and you're really just left, uh, I mean, exposed is an understatement, right? But it is, yeah, it's very basic, but, it, but it, again, it's very hard to do well, so. So sage advice, my friend. Um, I hope we've given everyone who's been listening, you know, a little insight into what XDR is, the various flavors, um, you know, what you should look for and what you should look out for. Um, and thanks to all of you for, you know, joining us. Uh, thank you for tuning in. Remember to bring the hammer down, as Thor would like to say, um, on that like button, subscribe, upvote, or whatever the heck button's in front of you that says you want to see more of this amazing series. And hopefully we will see you next time. So take care, everyone.